Large language models like those that power ChatGPT are taking over software. Every startup is rapidly moving to get some form of large language model powered machine learning into their stack. Wolfram Alpha is now plugged into ChatGPT. Khan Academy has their education AI. Salesforce has Einstein GPT. Bloomberg, in fact, took it one step further and fine tuned their own GPT model. So my question is, why don't we all do it? I'll explain why in a second, but in this video, I'm actually gonna show you how to build your very own auto GPT model using a framework that's taking the programming community by storm. So up until now, this has been difficult to do. Organizations have needed teams of machine learning engineers to be able to build, train, and productionize machine learning models. It was too big of an investment for most companies to bother taking on, but now it's not. And frameworks like Langchain make it dramatically easier to get started. Think of Langchain like Spider-Man with a jetpack. It's super fast and it's connected to the web. Programmers can use it to leverage large language models from OpenAI, Hugging Face, Cohere, and more. But where it gets super interesting is it provides the ability to use agents. This means you can have your own app reach out to the web or use your own documents inside of your own GPT pipeline. There's six key modules in Langchain. Models, prompts, indexes, memory, chains, and agents. Models gives you access to large language models. Prompts structure your prompts with templates. Indexes prepare your documents for working with large language models. Memory gives you your LLM chain access to historical inputs, kind of like ChatGPT. Chains allow you to string it all together and agents allow you tools like accessing Wikipedia or Google search. Now that you know a little bit about the Langchain framework, we're gonna go on ahead and build an application with it with Streamlit and Langchain. We're gonna run through a bunch of the modules. We'll take it end to end and be able to build an application that allows us to create a YouTube script generator and title. Now, in the interest of time, I'm gonna set a 15 minute timer to try to get this information to you as quickly as possible. So the first thing that we need to do is create two files. So we're going to create a file called apikey.py and we'll also need to create one called app.py. So inside of our apikey.py file, we're going to create a new variable called apikey and I'm going to set that equal to the apikey that is available inside of OpenAI. Now you can use different LLM service providers. I'll show you what that looks like a little bit over here. So if you didn't want to use the OPN AI service, you definitely don't need to. Now inside of our app.py file, we are then going to import that in. So I'm going to run import OS and I'm also going to bring in the API key. So from API key, import API key. Now we need to make this available to our OpenAI server. So to do that, I can run os.environ and then inside of a set of square brackets, I'm going to set a dictionary key. So OpenAI, OpenAI underscore API underscore key. And we are going to set that equal to this API key over there. So we're going to set it equal to that. Beautiful. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go on ahead and install some dependencies to be able to leverage the Langchain service. So I'm going to open up a terminal and then we're going to run pip install, oh, that's looking a bit weird. Bring that up. Let's clear that, oh, we're getting errors already. So pip install, uh, streamlit, we also need Langchain, the man of the hour. We also need OpenAI, Wikipedia, Chroma, DB, and we also need TikToken. So six different services that we're installing. So pip install, streamlit, Langchain, OpenAI, Wikipedia, Chroma DB, and TikToken. If we go and run that, that is all of our set of services now installed. Now, what we wanna do is we actually wanna bring some of those in. So we're gonna import Streamlit as ST. Streamlit is gonna be our application framework that allows us to work with our different services. So uh, bring in depths. I'm just gonna separate these out a little bit. And then what we wanna do is bring in the OpenAI server. So we're gonna go from Langchain dot LLMs, we are going to import OpenAI. So this is going to give us the OpenAI service to be able to leverage a large language model. The next thing that we probably want to do is start setting up a little bit of our app so we can see what it's going to look like. So first up, we'll create a title, so st.title, and we are going to grab some emojis from the Langchain documentation. And we're going to say that this is going to be equal to, instead of a set of strings, um, YouTube GPT creator. You can probably think of a better title than me. We're then going to create a place that we can pass through a prompt to our LLM. So to do that, we're going to create a new variable called prompt, and we're going to set that equal to st.text input. And here we're just going to include a label. So plug in your prompt here. Okay, so this is our app framework. Now, what we should probably do is let's start up our app. So I'm just going to clear this. So to start up our app, we can run streamlit, run app, dot pi 
Okay, that is our application. It looks like it's running. Beautiful. So you can see that we've got our title there and we've got our label that allows us to plug in our prompt. Let's move that. And so if I wanted to, I could pass through a prompt here and say, what is the fastest car in the world? Right now, it's not going to do anything because we don't have this hooked up to our LLM. So let's go on ahead and now hook it up. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to create an instance of our OpenAI server. So let's do that. So LLMs. So we're going to create a new variable called LLM and set that equal to OpenAI. And to that, we need to pass through a temperature value or position keyword argument. And this is going to dictate how creative or not creative our large language model is going to be. So we've just created a new instance of that OpenAI service. Then we want a way to go and trigger our prompt to our LLM. So we can say if prompt, then what we're going to do is create a new variable for our response. And we're going to actually pass through this prompt to this LLM. So we're going to say LLM and then pass through our prompt. And then we actually need a way to render this back to the screen. So I can do st or write st.write and pass through our response there. So this is going to actually show stuff to the screen if there's a prompt. Right, so now we can go back to our app. Let's rerun it. Right now we don't have a prompt, so nothing's going to run to the screen. But I could say, what is the fastest car in the world? And this should theoretically go to our Ape and API service and take a look, we've got our response. So the fastest car in the world is the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 plus with a top speed of 304 miles per hour. We could also say, write me a YouTube video title about deep learning. All things holding equal, take a look. Deep learning fundamentals, a crash course. Let me know if you want to see a video on that. Regardless, let's jump back on to our app. So right now, we've had to go and write out this entire prompt. We don't want to have to go and do that, specifically if we want a user-directed type application. We ideally would want them to just pass through a topic and have our application drive what prompts should be written out based on that. This is where prompt templates come in. So we're going to jump into our app and we're going to bring in a prompt template. So from langchain.prompts, we are going to import prompt template. And we're also going to import a LLM chain as well. So from Langchain, so our Langchain chain is going to allow us to run our topic through our prompt template and then go and generate output. So we're going to say from Langchain.chains, import LLM. No, oh, don't need your Siri, uh, LLM chain. Okay, cool. So that is that now imported. So we've gone and written these two lines here. So then what we want to do is we want to create a prompt template and our prompt template is purely going to take in our topic and it's going to write us a prompt that almost says, write me a YouTube video title and then it's going to plug in that variable there. So we don't necessarily need our user to go and write this entire thing going forward. So let's go on ahead and create our prompt template. So we're going to create a new variable called title template. I'm going to say set that equal to prompt template. Then what we need to do is dictate a input variable. So our input variable is going to be equal to a topic. And we also want to create a template here. So the template is going to be effectively just a string that we can pass a variable into it, almost like string formatting. So this is going to be a write me, let's actually just grab what we wrote out here. So let's copy this and plug it in here. So write me a YouTube video title about, and then we want to pass through our variable. So we can pass through our topic variable here. This means that when we go and use this prompt template, we only pass through a topic and it is going to prompt format it to that over there with our topic down here. Now to use this, we're actually going to use a LLM chain. So rather than just using the raw LLM, we're actually going to chain it together. So let's create a bit of a comment over here. So these are going to be our prompt templates. And then we're going to create our LLM chain. Actually, this is going to be our title chain. And we're going to set that equal to LLM chain. LLM chain. And then to that, what we need to do is we need to pass through our LLM and set that to equal to this LLM. So this is being passed through to our LLM chain. Then what we want to do is we want to set our prompt. So we can say prompt is equal to our title template. And then what we can do is rather than running the LLM directly down here, we'll actually grab our title chain and we'll do or pass through use the run method based on that prompt. So what we should effectively get is our prompt topic here. So really what we're doing is we're setting our topic equal to the prompt that we're getting from over here. Now, if we go and run this, we should effectively prompt format our topic into this 
specific prompt. So it should actually be running, write me a YouTube video title about a specific topic. I'm going to move this over to the side because we do get, or we can actually set verbose equal to true in here. Verbose equal to true. And you actually see the run chain as it's actually going through and running this. So let me zoom out of this so you can see it a little bit better. So let's actually go on ahead and bring this over to this side. So now if we get rid of that and just change it to just our topic or deep learning, when we go and run this now, we should effectively see the chain run. So let's go and refresh. We've got an error. Key error, input variables. What has happened there? Um, it's probably input variables. Change that over there. Let's go and rerun this. That looks like it's running successfully. So you can see down there, I, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little bit small, but you can see it's actually entering a new LLM chain. And you can see that this is the prompt after formatting. So write me a YouTube video title about deep learning. So it's actually gone and prompt formatted. It's taken our raw topic and passed it through to our prompt template. This is the advantage of using prompt templates because they simplify stuff an absolute ton. But for now, we've only got a prompt title or a YouTube title being generated. We want a script as well. It doesn't just stop there. We want to take this a little bit further. Well, this is where chains come truly in handy. So right now we're just using a single chain. We're using an LLM chain. Well, what we can actually do is we can chain a bunch of these together. So we can sequentially bring them together to be able to do a bunch of stuff. So from our Langchain module over here, we're also going to import simple sequential chain. And this is going to allow us to stack a bunch of these together to be able to generate multiple outputs. But we'll come back to that in a second. Multiple outputs, important to note. So we're actually going to create another prompt template. And this next prompt template is all going to be to do with actually generating a YouTube script, not just a title. So we'll copy this prompt, this template that we've got over here, which is currently title template, and we're gonna convert this to script template. The input to our script template is going to be our YouTube title. So our input variable over here is actually going to be our title. Let's zoom out, it's a little bit too zoomed in for me. And then our template is going to be, write me a YouTube video script based on this title and we'll say title and then we're actually going to pass through this title variable into our prompt template do you see how these prompt templates can really come in handy because it means that you've already got the prompt kind of formatted you just need to pass through the context specific variables makes your life a ton easier particularly when you've got to work with a bunch of documents which we'll come to later on okay so that is our script template now done now, what we need to do is we need to create another chain, but this chain is going to be for our script chain. So we're going to copy our title chain down here and we're going to create or convert this to be a script chain. How are we doing for time? Oh, four minutes left. Oh, wow, we're not going to make this. To our script chain, we're going to grab our script template and we're going to set that as our prompt down here. So you can see that we've now got two chains. So we've actually got two templates. So we've got a title champ uh, so we've got a title template and we've got a script template and we've now got a title chain and a script chain now we need some way to join these chains together because right now they're just operating independently one is not going to interact with the other this is where that simple sequential chain comes in that we brought in up here so we're going to copy that over and we're going to create a new instance of our sequential chain so i'm going to say sequential chain and set that equal to simple sequential chain there's one positional argument that we need to set to our simple sequential chain, and that is the chain's positional argument. And that is just a list of all of these sequential chains. Order is really important here. So we're going to basically specify that run this chain first, then run the next chain, or run a specific LLM chain first, then run the next chain. So the first chain that we want to run is our title chain, which is going to generate our video title. And then the output of our title chain is going to get passed to our script chain. It's a simple sequential chain. One output goes to the next chain. Now we can make this a little bit more sophisticated, which we'll do in a sec, but I'll come back to that and I'll show you why that's important. So to our chains, we're then going to grab our script chain and that's going to be the second one. And we're also going to specify verbose equal true. So you can see that what we've gone and done now is now we've got two templates, we've got two chains, and we've also got a simple sequential chain that chains them all together. Wow, how many times have I said chain? So let's grab this sequential chain, and then we are going to run sequential chain dot run, and we're going to be passing through our topic to that sequential chain. So this should effectively now 
run the title chain, generate the output, then pass the title to the script chain and generate the script. So let's make sure we can see the terminal because this is going to get interesting. So if we now go and refresh our app, it should go and automatically run the chain. That's the first one. Write me a YouTube video title about deep learning. And then all things holding equal. Have we saved this? We have not saved it. Let's save it. All right. Let's open up our terminal again. Let's rerun. Missing some keys. Input. Oh no, we've got an error. If you're enjoying this video and you'd like to learn a little bit more about Python for machine learning, deep learning, and data science, head on over to go.coursesfromnick.com forward slash Python, where you can take my entire tech fundamentals course from scratch for free. It takes you completely from the ground up and gets you started and ready for machine learning, deep learning, and data science. Back to the video. My bad. I realized I don't need topic over here. Let's get rid of that. Beautiful. Let's jump back over to our app. Let's rerun. Let's open up the terminal. Take a look. It's obviously going to take a while because it's actually generating now. And take a look. So it's actually going to run our sequential chain. So you can see the first chain that it's going to run is generating the title. And that's the title. And then that title is going to be passed through to our next chain. So if we now go and take a look. So you, this is our script, which is actually going to be run based on deep learning. How awesome is that? Now, take a look, right? So this is only outputting the script itself. It's not actually outputting the title. So this is where the simple sequential chain kind of fails a little bit because it's only going to output, let's minimize that terminal. It's only going to output the last output of the sequential chain. If we wanted to go and generate or grab multiple outputs, then it gets a little bit trickier. So we're out of time anyway, but I wanted to keep taking this further and show you just how powerful this is. So you saw that we use the simple sequential chain, but keep in mind that this will only output the last output. What we can do is we can actually sub this out for sequential chain, which is going to allow us to get multiple sets of outputs. What we do need to do though, is we need to specify output keys from each of our different title chains and script chains. So what we can say is that our title chain is going to output or the output key is going to be the title. So we're just going to update that chain and we also need to update our script chain so the output key there is going to be the script what we can then do is swap out our sequential or simple sequential chain for our sequential chain and then we're going to specify that our input keys or our input variables to our sequential chain are going to be purely the topic let me word wrap this so you can see it a little bit better so the input is going to be the topic and our output variables are going to be multiple output variables. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be outputting our title. And we're going to be outputting our script. So this should allow us to grab multiple outputs from our sequential chain rather than just getting the single one. This is where I find the API a little bit weird because you can't just use run here. You actually need to go and use a or pass through a dictionary. And our dictionary is going to take in topic as a key as well as our prompt. So there's is a little bit of nuance when it comes to using each of the different types of chains. So now what we're going to be doing is we should effectively be able to get our title out as well as our script. Now, what we need to do, though, is when we go and write it to be able to grab each one of these keys from our response variable, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our title and we'll also write out our script. So this should allow us to access both of those variables separately so we're going to grab the title and the script separately over there so you can, should be able to see that there okay what we now need to do just make sure our code is saved let's jump back into our application let's throw the terminal on this side so we can see it and let's rerun you can see we've got our prompt formatting happening down there so beginners going to deep learning and introduction to neural networks and then all things holding equal we should write out our title as well as our script Take a look, there is our title. So beginner's guide to deep learning, introduction to neural networks, and then right down here, we've got our script separately. So now you're able to get multiple different sets of outputs. Now, a big part of what makes ChatGPT cool is its ability to incorporate memory. It knows what's happened previously. So far, we haven't brought in memory into our LangChain app, but let's do that. Now, in order to add memory to our application, we're gonna access another LangChain class. So from langchain.memory, we are going to be importing conversation buffer memory which is over there what we then need to do is create an instance of this now we're going to be using the memory class but we're not actually going to be using it for prompting we're purely going to be using it for storing the history if you're building a chat based application this would come in handy a ton so we can create a new variable called memory and set that equal to conversation buffer memory and then we need to go and set two values we're going to set our input key and we're also going to store our memory key 
So our input key is going to be equal to our topic. And this is going to be deep learning at the moment. And our memory key will be our chat history. Now, what we can do is pass this memory value or memory class to both of our LLM chains. We're going to break this out once we go and start adding some tools. So stay tuned for that. Then we're going to add that to our script chain as well. And then what we actually want to do is we want to render this back to the screen so we can actually see our memory. So right down here under our prompt where we've been doing both of our writes, we're going to use a streamlit expander. So uh, we'll say with st.expander and then the title for our expander will be uh, message history. And what we'll do is we'll put in an info box. So st.info and we're going to pass through our memory dot buffer value so now if we go and rerun we should get an expander which is almost like an accordion and then inside of that we're going to get an info box which stores our memory which is coming from each of our chains so we've created our buffer and we've passed it to our chains and we're now writing it out to our expander so if we now go and refresh our app so right now there's nothing below if we go and rerun it just by hitting r on the keyboard If we scroll on down, take a look. We've now got our message history. So if we go and open that up, you can see that we've now got our output. Now, this is the one thing that I don't necessarily like about it. So right now, because I'm maybe using the incorrect class or a class that maybe is not ideal for sequential classes, you can see that our input right over here is deep learning and that AI is outputting the title. If anyone knows how to do this a little bit better, let me know in the description below. Because right over here, you can see that it's taking the topic again and we're outputting AI. There might be a way to output the title, but we're gonna break this out in terms of two separate classes. So you'll be able to see that once we get onto tools. Now there's one thing that makes Langchain really, really interesting. It's its ability to leverage tools. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is add some tools. So we're on the home stretch, so stick with me here. So we're gonna take this step by step. First thing that we need to do is go to Langchain. Dot util, wow, that was hard for me to type. Langchain utilities, oh wow. Uh, we're going to import the Wikipedia API wrapper. Perfect. So this is going to allow us to make API calls to the Wikipedia API. What we then need to do is we need to update our prompt template. So our prompt template is no longer only going to take in a title. We're going to take in some Wikipedia research as well. So what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to prompt with Wikipedia as a backup. So right now, our current prompt is saying, write me a YouTube video script based on the title. But what we could also do is say, um, but also while leveraging this Wikipedia research. And we could pass through that variable. So we could say Wikipedia research over here. Copy that, paste that into there. Beautiful, so we've now gone and brought in our Wikipedia API wrapper. We've now gone and updated our prompt. The next thing that we need to do is we need to break out our memory. So we're actually gonna have a title memory and we'll also, uh, I don't like word wrap at the moment. Let me zoom out a little bit. So we'll have a title memory and we're also going to have script memory. And our input key for our script memory is going to be our title, which is going to come out of there. And our input key for our title is going to be our topic. Okay, cool. So what we can then do is we need to update each one of these. So our title memory is going to go, my head is probably covering that. Let me make sure, let's bring that this up a bit. So our title memory is going to go to our title chain. All this code is going to be available via GitHub as well, guys. So let me just, we probably should put word wrap. And our script memory is going to go to our script chain. So that's looking good. And then what we actually need to do is we actually need to get rid of our sequential chain. I know it's served us well, but we're done with it now. So that means that we've now got two LLM chains that are running independently. The next thing that we need to do is bring in our Wikipedia API wrapper, create a new instance of that. So I'm gonna call it Wiki. And what's gonna happen now is we pass through our, our topic to our title chain, it'll generate a title. We'll then take that title and the Wikipedia research and we're gonna pass it through to our script chain. So what we're gonna do now is we're no longer actually gonna run the sequential chain. We're gonna be running three separate calls. So our title is now going to go back to our title chain. And that is going to take in our topic, which is going to be equal to our prompt. And then our, we'll pass our title to our, well, what we'll actually do is we'll do our Wikipedia research. And that's going to use the Wikipedia API wrapper. So what we'll do is we'll pass our prompt to that as well. And then the last thing that we want to do is generate our script. And our script is going to take in two inputs now. So script chain. So 
that a script chain is going to take in remember right up here it's going to take in a title and the wikipedia research so the title is going to come from up there so title will be equal to title and our wikipedia research what's the uh key called it should be full uh the full value of wikipedia research so it should look like that so now we'll get our title we'll get our wiki research and we'll get our script we also need to update our buffer because we've got two memory buffers now so let's create another expander so we're going to have uh the title history and that's going to come from the title memory buffer and then we're going to have our script history which is going to come from our script memory buffer perfect and what we'll do is we'll add another expander for our wikipedia research so right down here is we'll go wikipedia research is going to be over here and we're going to say uh do, do, do what do we let's just output the full wikipedia research over there perfect and over here what we need to do is change this so this is going we're just going to write out the title from over there and we're going to write out the script from over there so adding tools breaks it up a little bit i know it's a little bit unfortunate because we've built it all up but that's the easiest way that i found to do it based on the documentation it is continuously evolving so all things holding equal we should now be able to go and run this let's give it a crack so if we go to our app let's refresh we've got an unexpected error so inside of our title chain let's get rid of the keyword topic so over here let's just remove this uh we should also be running it so title chain dot run script chain dot run let's go and refresh take a look doesn't look like we've got any errors yet so take a look so we've got our script being output we've also got our video script being output now if we go to our title history we can see the human has passed through deep learning and the ai is responding with that we go to our script history the human is passing through the title and the video script is now being output so that's a much better way of using the memory particularly when you have multiple inputs we can also see the wikipedia research take a look it's bringing up deep reinforcement it's bringing in a south park episode have we incorporated anything to do with south park i think it did previously but in our particular case that is our video script now done. And that is the Langchain crash course now done as well. There's only one thing that I didn't really cover in here and that's indexes. But if you'd like to see a video on that, do let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you in the next one. So what do you think? What are you gonna build with Langchain? If you'd like to see me build a machine learning model from scratch that allows you to do exercise-based detection, take a look here.